We want to update you now on a story that we first brought to you several weeks ago, a, a real disturbing mystery, and it's developing along the shores of Cape Cod. In just one month, the total number of dolphins that have stranded themselves is about 116 and climbing. It's happening along this stretch of beaches on Cape Cod, and things are becoming so bad that rescuers are actually on Capitol Hill briefing Congress about this problem. It's a story that we think is undercovered, certainly considering its magnitude. Brian Sharp is a stranding coordinator with the International Fund for Animal Welfare, and he is leading the current rescue operations in that region. Um, in fact, he and his crew had to rush out this morning as we look at some of these pictures because they got word that 10 more dolphins had actually been stranded up on the shore. And here's where the story gets very strange. This is something that actually does happen every year. It just never happens at this rate and it never happens with this magnitude and they never have to bring out this many rescuers all at one time and it gets even a little more bizarre because the same species is actually washing up on the shore that's unusual because while every year they have several dolphins that wash up they are usually from different species and while you have all of these scientists they cannot figure out exactly what it is that's causing this many dolphins to do this. When we come back from the break, we are going to take you live to the beach, talk to the people who are actually in the water trying to rescue dolphins currently, and find out what else they know from today's emergency. Welcome back. I want to take you live now out to the shores of Wellfleet, Massachusetts, where Brian Sharp is standing by. He is a stranding coordinator with the International Fund for Animal Welfare. Going into the break, Brian, I teed up what's going on where you are, but I still am very confused as to what you think might be afoot with all of these dolphins, record numbers, in fact, washing up on the shores. Uh, that's hard to say, Ashley. That's what we're trying to figure out. So, uh, you know, with the animals today, we've had four strands so far. Actually, one uh, occurred about 500 feet away from us. So uh, we're still dealing with uh, the situation. So we're definitely still uh, deep within this event. And uh, part of the job now is uh, to be able to try to figure out what is causing these strandings. So uh, we've performed necropsies on nine of these animals so far that have not made it. And so now the, uh, you know, the scientific part of the... Uh, uh, process begins. But but were there any toxins found when you did those necropsies? Were, was there anything that led you to believe that there might be a lead? Uh, well, we have received reports from other agencies through aerial surveys and uh, vessel-based surveys that uh, have cited large groups of this type of dolphin, which is called a common dolphin, uh, in the area. And so if we get large groups like that, chances are, uh, you know, we're talking in the hundreds, that we will get small groups that splinter off. And that's kind of what we've been seeing during this event. Uh, some days have been very large. Uh, our largest day, we had uh, over 50 animals. Uh, other days, we may only get one animal. But it's been going on now for uh, today's uh, 22nd day. So we've been going since January 12th. It's just unbelievable when I look at these numbers, 116 stranded, 82 dead, 30 of them released. I, I'm trying to get a handle on, I'm, I'm seeing what you're wearing and you're, you're suited up to be in the water. Are they beaching themselves or are they swimming in perilously shallow water and you're just trying to almost herd them back out to deeper water? What, what are you all doing? Yeah, it's, well, it's a combination of all those. Uh, we've had animals that have stranded over uh, 25 to 30 miles of coastline, and it ranges everything from Wellfleet Harbor that's behind me where we have a muddy uh, surface to sandy surfaces. But uh, some of these animals are in, stranded in waters that are as shallow as a couple inches. Some are stranded high and dry. We have tides here, uh, especially here in Wellfleet, that are uh, during storms and during certain parts of the lunar cycle that are over 12 feet. So you can imagine an animal swimming in 12 feet of water. Six hours later, that animal's high and dry. Can I ask you, in the past years, when the numbers have been uh, so, so much um, less jarring, have you had any indication why other dolphins or other species of dolphins have beached themselves or come into shallow waters that, that might give you an indication of what's going on this year? No, it's, uh, it's all been the same species. Um, we have had uh, strandings over longer period of times that have involved uh, multiple species, but 
Uh, this is by far our largest stranding of single species. So these have all, all 116 have been common dolphins. And again, it's happened over 22 days. So it's, uh, the intensity has been very high. And to put it in perspective, uh, we typically will hit these numbers in about a year. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're hitting those numbers in about three weeks. So it, it, it's been incredibly fast. Uh, luckily, we have, a, uh, we have a staff of six biologists and we have a core of about 300 volunteers. So uh, they're the ones that are making this work happen. And uh, we have some success, too. So, you know, while there have been deaths, Good. there have uh, we have about a 66 we have about 66 percent success rate. So we have uh, thir over 30 animals that we've uh, oh. been able to release back out into the ocean. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for that. And, and I'm uh, sending out our, our good wishes to you and your team. And hopefully th those numbers can can start reversing soon. Brian Sharp, thanks so much. Good luck to you all.